My name is Ben Chong and I live on Gabi Gabi country here on the Sunshine Coast. The past five years have been some of the hardest of my life. My family and I have lost loved ones. We've had chronic illness. We've felt everything from loneliness, to fear, anger, sadness. And we've wept with our friends and our neighbours as they have lived through unthinkable grief. And our hearts have broken, witnessing disaster and injustice in our nation and in the world. And at times there's just been a real feeling of being absolutely crushed. You know, and at those times hope doesn't feel like a bright or a victorious thing. It's more like a desperate hanging on, having nothing else but God. So through it all, I've been grateful for scripture like the Book of Lamentations. It's helped to hear the cries of others as they suffer and as they seek God in the midst of their despair. Lamentations is written during a time of immense loss and pain from individual to national levels. And it's an attempt to express something of the inexpressible depths of suffering. And Lamentations teaches us something important, which is it's right and proper to respond to suffering with lament. When God's people face evil, injustice, oppression and suffering, the biblical response is often lament. It's an essential step on the journey towards hope and trust. Mark Rogop calls lament the pathway to praise when life gets hard. And he describes four stages of lament, turning to God in prayer, bringing our complaints, asking boldly, and then choosing to trust or praise. And this week's passage picks up on that final stage, which is choosing to trust or praise after the previous chapters have moved through lots of desperate prayer, complaint, and request. And so here it is from verse 21. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. And I love how this begins, yet. Amidst immense suffering, the author defiantly still puts their hope in God's great love, his ever-present mercy and compassion, his consistent faithfulness and his character. And I think we need lament to get to that yet. The very idea of persevering hope means that you are enduring through something. Persevering hope doesn't look like mindless positivity. It is pouring out to God in complete honesty, in anger, in despair, in silence, choosing to bring it to God. Jesus embodied this trusting hope in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, Lord, if there's any other way, if you can take this cup, yet not my will but yours. And his persevering hope looks like tears that don't seem to end, like sweating blood. But he uses lament and prayer to gain courage and faith to go to the horrors of the cross. And his yet changed the direction of all history from despair to hope. The light shines in the darkness and it has not, it cannot and it will not be put out. In 2018, my wife and I packed up our life into my little Toyota and drove up here to the Sunshine Coast. We were coming to join the care team for my wife's sister, Ellie. And in her immense suffering, Ellie demonstrated some of the most triumphant and hopeful faith that I've ever witnessed. I remember one evening, many people had gathered to pray for Ellie and to worship over her. And Ellie left her bed in enormous pain. She came downstairs and she declared to everyone in the room that Jesus is King and she challenged us to live generous, loving lives now and to put our hope in Jesus. And she worshipped over us. She prayed over us. Ellie went to be with Jesus six years ago and her hope in Jesus continues to move me deeply. She lived a defiant, persevering hope until her final breath and she challenges me to join with the great body of saints who hold on to that yet. The yet that says, even if the cancer isn't cured, even if my son didn't live, even if the grief seems like it will crush me, even if those people hurt me, even if the money's tight, even if the war still rages, even if my questions aren't answered, whatever the circumstances, yet, through tears and hanging on by a thread, I will wait for and put my hope in God, whose mercies are new every morning, whose compassions never fail. That word wait in this passage is the Hebrew word yahal, meaning to hope or to wait with expectancy. Revelations 21 describes a new heaven and a new earth where all suffering's gone, where every tear is wiped from our eyes. And that's what we can expect. We can put our hope in Jesus through whom this world is possible and who's already ushering it in. As Arundhati Roy wrote, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. 
and on a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. So in this Lent season, if you find yourself in suffering, I see you. May you know comfort and peace in the midst. May you feel God's never failing compassion for you as you lament. He is big enough to hear it all. God's not afraid of your feelings. He invites you to share them with him. He's no stranger to the depths. He has walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I pray that the God of hope may fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you encounter Jesus who loves you and who chooses to meet you in the mess and to find hope in him. And as you wait and as you hold on to hope, may you yet hear the coming kingdom on its way. God bless you.